Again, hi, Storytime friends. How are you doing? Man, this weather has been wild, right? Who could hear wind at their house recently? Did anybody lose power? That's kind of different, right? You lose power at your house, can't turn the lights on the normal way. Some of us have generators when that happens and some of us don't. I hope everyone was able to stay warm and get water and all the things that we need. You know what that makes me think of though, when I think about winter weather, when it's so cold outside, I think about all the animals that live outdoors. They don't have houses like we do, right? I mean, they do have homes though, some of them, right? Dens and places that they sleep. Today, we're going to talk about winter animals. One of the first books I'm gonna read is called Tracks in the Snow. Have any of you guys, probably not with the wind, but have any of you ever seen tracks in the snow and wondered what kind of an animal made them? Let's look at this story. Just outside my window, there are tracks in the snow. Who made the tracks? Where do they go? I skip across the snowy yard, around the old oak tree. Past the garden gate I go. Good thing I have a key. It's too big to be a rabbit. No bears this time of year. Is it that hippopotamus hiding over there? Tracks in the snow, tracks in the snow. Who made the tracks? Where do they go? In and out of rocks I squeeze and along a frozen pond, slip across a snowy bridge into the woods beyond. It could have been a duck, but I think they're gone away. I know it's not a woodchuck. They sleep all night and day. Tracks in the snow, tracks in the snow. Who made the tracks? Where do they go? I peek under a fallen log, then tramp stamp up a hill. Quickly down the other side, the tracks keep going still. Could it be a fox, a dog, maybe a squirrel or a kitten? Oh, look here, what's this? I see someone's lost a mitten. Tracks in the snow, tracks in the snow. Who made the tracks? Where do they go? My feet are getting oh so cold. Still, there's no sign of it. And even though the time is late, I really hate to quit. Snowflakes fall softly as quiet as a mouse. Hey, the tracks are leading right back to my house. Wait, I know who made those tracks. I know where these tracks go. I made them yesterday out playing in the snow. Tracks are fun to follow as long as someone knows where you're at, right? Maybe you should follow tracks with mom or dad or try to figure out what kind of tracks you see outside. So in that book, we saw a few animals though. Where do animals go when it's cold outside? All kinds of different animals sleep in different places, don't they? This one is called Over and Under, and I think we're gonna see some more animals over and under the snow. Over the snow, I glide into the woods, frosted, fresh, and white. Over the snow, a flash of fur, a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Under the snow is a whole 
secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them now. Over the snow I glide, past beech trees rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss out of sight. Look, says dad, tracks. Tracks always tell a story. Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust, up a hill, under a tree. An oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Under the snow, deer mice, do you see them down there? Doze. They huddle up, cuddle up against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. Do you see them? Over the snow, I climb, digging in my edges so I don't slide back down. Under the snow, voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. Over the snow, I swoosh down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, whoops! Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from the shelter of a spruce, almost invisible. She smooths her fur coat. It's winter white. Over the snow, I glide past reeds where tadpoles play tag in the springtime. And under the snow, fat bullfrogs snooze. They dream of sun warmed days back when they had tails. Over the snow, I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. And under the snow, the beavers gnaw on aspen bark, settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? Over the snow, stop, a sound. We stand like statues carved in the ice till a bushy-tailed fox steps from a thicket, tips his ear to the ground, listens, listens. Listen still, and leaps out onto the snow after an invisible dinner. His paws scratch away to find the mouse he heard scratch scratching along underneath, under the snow. Over the snow I glide, a full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk wakes for a meal. Bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. Over the snow, I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises, warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dogs, sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick sticky marshmallow from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drowses away December all alone. She'll rule a new colony in the spring. Over the snow, I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery soft flakes. Under the covers, I snuggle deep and drift into dreams of cuddling deer mice and slumbering frogs, hungry beavers and tunneling voles, drowsy bears and busy squirrels, and the secret kingdoms under the snow. Did you guys know that animals live under the snow and make their homes like that in the winter? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? All cozy and warm, kept away from all this wind because they're hiding under the snow. That's pretty cool. All right, I have one more story. This one, this is a cute story. Snowy nap 
Does anybody know what that critter in the middle of the page is? It's prickly, kind of like a porcupine, but smaller. Can anybody tell me? Did you say a hedgehog? If you did, you would be correct. Let's read about the snowy nap. Can you guys see? Young Hedgy sniffed the chilly wind. Snow is on the way, he thought. I'll just take a last ramble around the farm. He didn't want to miss a moment. He could barely keep his eyes open as he walked. The hens noticed at once. Time for Betty Bye, they cackled. It won't be long before you have to hibernate and our coop will be bedazzled by icicles. In a sleepy daze, Hedgy trundled past the pond. The geese honked, goodbye until spring. We'll think of you as we play slip and slide across the pond ice. It's already starting to freeze. Hedgy came to the sheep shed. Nighty night, the sheep bawed. One of the sheep had seen hedgehogs on the farm head for their cozy dens year after year as winter arrived. She was ready to tell Hedgy what he would miss. I'll soon see the snowman Lisa makes, she said. The billy goats overheard and crunched across the frozen field to add, as usual, you will miss winter blue time when the sun sets and the snowy farm appears in every shade of blue. The pig watched Hedgy stop for a big yawn. Have a good winter sleep, she oinked. If only I could save a few snowflakes for you. No two are alike. When the pony trotted up, Hedgy guessed what he wanted to say. Sleep well, he neighed. If you hear bells in your dreams, it will be me pulling my sleigh. That was the last straw. I don't want to sleep all winter like last year, protested Hedgy. I want to see icicles and snowmen, snowflakes and pond ice. I want to hear sleigh bells. Before Hedgy could yawn again, he decided to turn around and stay up for the winter. The night grew frosty cold. Must stay awake. Must stay awake. Must stay awake to see winter. Hedgy shivered and his eyes closed. From the farmhouse window, Lisa saw a still shape outside in the cold. Poor little hedgehog is frozen stiff, she cried. She bundled him up and brought him inside. Lisa put Hedgy in a tea cozy and gave him a spot by the window. That was a close call, she said. A snowstorm is on the way. You'd better stay in the house and warm up. To Hedgy's delight, the next morning, he saw the world outside shimmering with snow. The old chicken coop sparkled like a palace. Every day he watched from a different window and new wintry scenes appeared. The pond froze into a shiny mirror. Mirror Lisa twirled on her skates as the geese and the gander slid to keep up. To Hedgy's amazement, one day Lisa rolled great balls of snow. Before he knew it, he was looking at his first snowman. He was getting sleepier, but each morning held a new surprise. The little hedgehog was dozing when he heard the tinkling of bells. He tried with all his might and opened his eyes. There was a pony pulling a sleigh. Lisa made a snowball and tossed it in his direction. Kapoof! Hedgy slept later every day. One day he woke to see flowers of frost decorating his window. The trees looked like lace against the sky. I have truly seen winter was Hedgy's last thought as he nodded back to sleep. Lisa knew it was time. Leaving the door ajar, she cradled the little hedgehog. You belong in the wild, she whispered in his ear as she carried him through the drifts. She crouched by his burrow and nestled him inside. Sweet dreams, little adventurer, she said. 
Just then, she noticed the front door was swinging on its hinges. Squawks and rumbles were coming from inside. Lisa peered through the doorway and saw animals higgly piggly making a commotion in her house. Each one was thinking, I'll see winter from a nice warm house. Out, 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 skedaddle, she laughed. Don't you know this is not where you live? Lisa was shooing the last mouse from the house as Hedgie, snug at his burrow, fell into a deep sleep. He was dreaming about icicles and snowmen, snowflakes and pond ice. It was a long, snowy nap. Well, that was a super cute story. So I think maybe we're supposed to get a little more wind tomorrow and the temperatures are pretty cold outside, but I hope maybe you have a good book to curl up with and some family or some friends to share it with. And I wanna wish you all a very happy new year and tell you I'm sorry that story time was late today. We had some trouble with our phones after all this power went out and they had to come fix them today. So hopefully we'll be on time next week and hopefully you'll join me again. I'll see you next time for story time. Bye for now, friends.